Hello everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, today in this video, I'm going to finish up my extended example of Normandy 44. And today we're going to finish out turn number one, uh, which is going to involve the Germans going first and then the Allies going second. Now, if you didn't see our invasion phase of this game, please do check it out up in the corner there. Let's see, right up there someplace. Uh, check that out because we do have the invasion step that got us to this point so far. So now we're going to continue on with the German step. Now in the German turn one, they can do their full movement value. All of these can, except for the 21st Panzer Division, which is down here, these units here, and they can um, only move three movement points. So, so instead of having their five movement points, they're restricted to three. And the other uh, units that can't do anything are units like this one over here, where they have the movement numbers in a black box there. Uh, and we'll get a close up of that for you. And then we have some units over here also that are sort of stuck here. And these units cannot move this turn uh, unless somebody gets close enough to them or the next turn they can start moving. So let's move on to turn number one. And we're going to start off over here with some German movement up in this corner of the map right here. Okay, we're going to start on this northern uh, peninsula here. And we have a lot of uh, ally units down here coming in through Utah Beach there. So that's got a lot of activity here. So we want to send down some reinforcements that way. Okay, so up here we're dealing with um, weather that is overcast too. So that allows half movement points for all mechanized units along the roads here. So we're going to take advantage of that on a couple of these here. Uh, now the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have some availability of this artillery to hit some of these units. We really want to attack this unit right here. It's kind of weak right now. We want to just bring in reinforcements in general over this area to stop this expanse here. So I'm going to take this artillery unit here and move that right there. And this artillery, if you move it one square, you can still use it. If we moved it more than one, we'd have to actually flip it on over. Uh, so because we didn't move it more than one, we can, we can use that on our turn. This Panzer unit here has five movements, so we want to bring it down to reinforce this town here. Because in this town here, we're going to take this 91st here and we're going to go one half, one, one, sorry, half, one, one and a half, and two. We're going to put this here because that's going to be part of this attacking force right here. And it's also going to form a uh, bond here and try to stop these units from moving. Now this doesn't have a zone of control. So what we want to do is we want to take this stern unit here and we want to bring that down to reinforce this unit here. So we have half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, and three and a half. So now we just created a Zoc bond right here so that these guys can't come north here. But we do, we are going to reinforce this just a little bit more. So we're going to take this unit here, this, the 709th here, we're going to take the 709th unit here and we're going to come on down. So there's one, two, three, and then four. And that's going to team up with this unit here to create a nice little bond between these two. Now we're also going to take the 91st here and just move this down next to this cadre air unit there because we do want to put some pressure on there and also with this artillery that can reach it now. So that we don't want to leave this open. So this panzer unit here has five movement points. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. So we bring this down to the city there to reinforce that. And this unit here is going to follow the road to come down to this city here to help put some more pressure on this cadre, this uh, air unit. We definitely want to get rid of this nice weak unit. And because these are all shocked, they can't form a zone of control yet. So there's one, two, and then one right there. And that puts him there. And then we're going to move these stack units here, the stack unit here. We're going to bring that on up and add to that. And again, just to make sure that we have an armor advantage, we're going to take this panzer unit here and bring that up into 
that square also. So these are the moves that we want to make up at the top here, up at the northern portion. And in addition, moving everything down, we want to move some of this up. Now this 91st here, this one, because there are no zones of control here, no uh, zone of control lock, we can actually bring this one right up in between those two units there. And that's, that's going to help a little bit. And to reinforce that, we're going to just bring this unit up one to sort of block off this river road uh, into the city here. So we're, we're trying to hem everybody in here. Now, the city is left open here. So we're actually going to go down here and you can't see this unit here. Let me, let me adjust the camera so you can. Okay, so now you can see this unit here. This has three movement points. So this comes up to one, two, and two and a half. So we'll place that unit there to help out reinforce the city and just keep this area pretty tight with Germans uh, defense to prevent any movement from all of these elite units here. And while they're all shocked, we want to take advantage of that. Okay, so that's about the best that we can reinforce this area on the peninsula here, at least at Utah Beach. Now we're gonna move on over to the east and take care of Omaha Beach, the issue that we have going on over there. Okay, so over in Omaha, we have to do what we can. We don't have a lot of units here, but we do have enough uh, to create some issues for the allies if we can. All right, so we're gonna take the 352nd and we're gonna move it on over to join this other 352nd. So we'll move it one, two, three there. We're also gonna add this unit on over there to really add some punch to it. And this is the three flak. But we don't want a free reign for this gentleman right here. So to stop the ally here, we're going to take the 352nd here. And one, two, bring that on up to sort of make a bond here between these two here. Zone of control, zone of control lock. And prevent this unit from moving any further in than what it already is. We've had, we have these guys pretty well blocked, but we do have some open area over here which could be a problem so we're going to take the 352nd panzer here and go one two three and then we're going to move it one more so actually we have to go there and then up that way we stay out of the zone of control so that moves our panzer into there and the 352nd here we're going to follow this road Right on up and here and reinforce this panzer unit here. So we have those two there. And just get one last unit here. We're just going to bring on over this uh, 716th. Going to bring it on over there to help support that area there and form a nice solid zone of control lock here. This unit here, we're going to bring on up into the city right here. So we got one, two, and then three. Bring that in right there. And we want to get this unit moving on up while the weather is still feasible for the road here as far as possible. So we got one, two, and three. Just put it outside, just outside of Traverse there. So one of the units that you can't see, which is off camera way over here, are two bike units. We're gonna rush it on up here to buy you to get it as close as possible to help add some reinforcements either direction. So they get to move six movement points. So there's one, there's two, there's three, and I see them coming in there. Four, five, and six. So we get them um, not quite where we want them, but close enough. And I think I might have gone one too far. That would that would actually be six right there. And then the second unit. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Yes, so they follow along right next to each other. So by the British coming in on Gold Beach, we're going to bring this unit out of the bocage and bring it into the city here. So it gets the a benefit of being in the city. And this 2-3 unit here, 
it's going to come over one, two, and form a bond here and here. So that's going to help out. But we also have this unit here that we can bring on up and we're just going to go straight across the, the field here. One, two, and three. And that's going to help out with that unit there to give it some reinforcement there and some fighting power. So that's pretty much what we're taking care of Omaha and part of Gold Beach here. But let's move further down and see what we can do over in the east here. Now, Khan is, is an extremely important uh, hub here because you can see how that goes out in many different directions here. So it's important to prevent these units from invading and taking into that. So we're going to try and bring in as much reinforcement as we can. Although we don't have a ton, we're going to bring in some. So we have this unit here. We're actually going to have this unit fall back into the Bacage right here on the other side of the river. And that's, that's going to help. And we also still create that Zoc lock right there. And we have the Zoc lock right there too. Now our Panzer down here is limited to three, but we can still follow the road here. So we're going to go one. two, three, into these paratroopers here. We're also going to take this flak gun, the 21st, and we're going to take this and bring this on up to reinforce that square right there, or that hex. Bring it up to reinforce that hex right there. And I don't know if you can, you can't see this panzer down here, but we're going to bring it up so you can see it. There's one, two, and then three. So we're going to put it on the other side of Khan there to help get it up into the battle here so that next turn we can bring it on in to help out. And this 21st, the 21st here, we're going to bring this on over and reinforce this stronghold right there. And that way that forms a zone of control bond between here and there. We have a unit off the map down here that you can see but you will in a minute and it can go two. So we have one, two, and we'll put it at the crossroads right there to help. And you barely see it in the, in the screen there, but it's right there. And the 21st here, the six, five unit right there, we're going to bring that on up to help reinforce. And we'll bring it right here and here, and that's going to help strengthen this hex right here with our armor. And then we have the 21st down here off camera, but where you're going to see it in a minute, it's coming on in there, there, that's two. And then three, we're going to put in that city, form a bond here. So now we have a zone of control lock here, zone of control lock here, and we don't have anything here. Unfortunately, we couldn't get anything to that stronghold there. That'd be nice because we'd have a zone of control lock here, here, across to here, and on over to here. So that would be nice if we could, but we don't have anything for that. But next turn, we'll be able to bring this one up and probably form one across here if these units all survive. Now this paratrooper is, came in with a good landing, and he has a zone of control lock here and here with the ocean. So we need to make sure that this guy stays in supply, which he will be losing supply here if we left alone. So we're going to Move this 7-11th unit here, bring that up here and right there. And that keeps our supply line open. So unfortunately limited to the three movements with the Panzers, this is about the best that we can do to lock this all in as well as we can. Now we do have some, you know, major holes in our, our gap here, but we, we just don't have the units to put up there, but we put everything that we could up there. Wind out a little bit so you can see this Panzer unit down here. Now we want to get it up here so it gets into the battle. So we're going to go ahead and move that right now. And we're going to, it only has three movements. So there's one, two, and three. We'll would put it right there, just on the other side of that town. But I think for strength, we'll have it stay inside that city. Okay, so I've taken you, that, that pretty much ends the German movement, but I've taken you back over here to Omaha Beach 
just to show you the effectiveness of a zone of control lock because units also have the uh, lock to the beach so when we look at these three these three units here we have a zone of control lock here so the units can't move into the square uh, this one has a zone of control lock to here so they could move into this here this hex except this one also performs a lock down this line right here with this beach area right there so that stops that from happening and this one here blocks any movement this direction and also stops the lock it has a zone of control lock to the beach area here so this unit can't move there so neither one of these units can move into that square uh, neither one of these units can move into this square so that pretty much hems them in for preventing this other group coming here now this gives the germans time to advance up reinforce this area and hopefully uh, try to you know lock them down in here so the americans are going to have to have quite a battle down here to push on through this beach and get past these units here with all of these locks here and especially right here unfortunately this guy if he would have stayed at full strength would have been better prepared to deal with this particular one here and open up that zone of control lock right between these two that would have been nice Okay, so it's time to move on to the German battle. We've we finished our movement phase, and we're gonna move on to the combat phase. And we'll start over here in this area right here. Okay, so over here in Utah Beach, the main attack is gonna come on this these units to the cadre here. Now, um, the airborne cadre has a defense strength of two, as you can see there, and it can only uh, defend itself. It can't attack back. But this is increased to four because of the defensive combat bonus that it gets from the bakaj that it's sitting in. So that has a four. Now, the bakaj actually adds a plus three to the defensive bonus, but it cannot be anything more than what the unit itself gets. So because it only gets a two, it can only get two a plus two from the because if this was a three it would actually have a defense bonus of three but right now we have a defense bonus of four the german player is going to um, designate the 91st air landing division with the uh, attached tank battalion has the main assault force so it's going to be these units right here are going to be the main assault force and so the 91st which they attack at full strength, while all of the units attack at half strength. Units attacking across the flooded hex sides are halved, even though one is part of the main attack force. So he's half here, even though he's the part of the main uh, attack force, but because he's going across here, he gets cut into half. So the odds become a 12 to four, which equals three to one. So the German player is going to spend a point to remember this artillery that we have right over here in this corner right up here. Uh, they're going to spend a point to fire that into here. So that's going to now move it on over to a four to one. And then we're going to get a second shift because we have armor and they do not. So now that makes it a five to one. So we're going to roll the die and we get a five. So on five to one, when we look at a five on five to one, it's a D one. The defender loses one step. Any remaining defending unit must either retreat or conduct a determined defense. If the defender retreats, they become disrupted and the attacker may advance after combat. Now this unit is not gonna do a determined defense. So it's just gonna be removed off the board. And the units now can advance in if they like. And we don't have to advance in directly right to here, although this is, I believe, a point scorer for us. But um, the main assault force, we can advance him here and there. And I think um, we'll just keep that there. I don't know that that would benefit us any. So we'll just, we'll just leave that right there. So we'll advance these two in. And that forms a lock here. A lock here and then of course we have this unit here so not so much a lock but we also have um, a lock across here so we sort of have these guys hemmed in quite a bit um, somewhat they can still move through here but we do we do have a pretty good 
solid bond going across there to try and keep everybody hemmed in. And we do have this weak cadre here that um, hopefully you know we can do something with next time. All right, so over here in the Commonwealth section, um, we're actually going to attack this paratrooping group here, the reduced one, and this Panzer division is going to attack with this battalion here. The reduced battalion receives one for in the Bacage because again, he could have get three, but he only has one defense, so he has a defense of two now. And because this is the 21st Panzer division, 21st and 21st, they all attack at full strength. So this makes the odds 12 to 2. So if we add that up, 12 to 2 there, which is 6 to 1. The armor shift makes it a 7 to 1. So we're going to roll the die, and the result is a 4. At 7 to 1, the die, die roll is a 4. Result is A1, attacker loses 1. D2, a defense loses 2. Since there's only one defending step, the attacker loses none. We have an attacker loses 1, defender loses 2. But since there is only one defender step, the attacker loses none because we have to have two steps to take away from there before we can take the one away from them. So we don't have that. So we just lose that unit. The A1D2 allows the attacker to place his attacking unit in reserve, which the German player does. So we can advance this unit here. So in the German reserve phase, the three units of the 21st Panzer Division, which gained a reserve marker in the combat phase, now move and attack the airborne unit in Ranville. So our odds are 12 to 9 or 1 to 1. The armor shift, right here, makes it a 2 to 1. So we roll the die, and we get a 3. The result is exchange. So each side loses a step, no advance, no retreat. The step loss is selected by the opposing player, so the allied player ex selects the assault gun unit to take the step loss. So we're going to take the step loss on the assault gun, and then this unit, still scattered, but it takes one there. So German recovery phase and supply, um, all the German units are in supply, nothing to recover, but I do have to take this one off for that armor um, use that we got over here in this northern section here. So with that, that ends the German turn, and now we're gonna move on to the Allied player turn, see what they can do to uh, sort of break through all of this.